okay part two but that's pretty much it in a nutshell i mean that's that's again how you would want that and then you can just simply tie it off any way you you like you know um and it'll hold it in place and so you have and your um your piece that you're rigging down somebody can grab it and pull it to where and so you, that, that's how that pretty much works that's the porter wrap to the pulley to the target piece and that's how you would want to um go about doing that you know and of course now i know a lot of you guys see my videos and i mean i've had a lot of conversation with guys about using carabiners but I always use steel carabiners i try to change them every two years or no every year I try to like twice once or twice a year i get new ones and i know what i'm doing with my stuff so i don't overload it and i know that a lot there's a lot of talking about side loading and things but i'm telling you um i like splices now as y'all can tell i've spliced a lot of rope um i just prefer clipping in some people prefer knots I'm terrible at knots and it takes too much time for me so I just clip in and I go and that's um again that that just helps me be more effective and, and it's it's not as time consuming for me but it's again it comes down to preference I don't want to be dogmatic about anything you know I, and I still do what I do despite but I've never had any issues never broke any carabiners never had any issues with no rope never snapped any rope because again you I see some guys taking stuff that's ridiculous you have to know and learn what you can take and what your devices can hold now it's just like why would i take this whole top you know granted i could probably take this with this device i could probably take this um p this whole piece but you know why would i need to do that you know why can't i just maybe climb up maybe three quarters of the way and take another piece you know take it in two pieces or however you want to do it you know it's just you have to figure that out for yourself and definitely that's why this is again tree work is so dangerous because you you get up there you you be rigged in see so more than likely see the way this is set up too and what i want to explain is that when you're in the tree most of the time you're back here on the back of this tree up here like where you you have your knots cut out the top here your lanyards will probably be wrapped around underneath this some people like to go over it's just depending on who it is your notch is up here, um, you notch it, and then you do your back cut. So that piece, you would try to get the fall forward if you're rigging to the front, like in this setup. So again, it comes down to preference. There's many different ways to do it, but again, an overview. Um, you use your different slings. And here's a, let me show you this eye to eye sling. Um, it's just the same concept. You just, you can run that eye um, around the, um, the base of the porter wrap or even inside of the, um, the pulley there. And it just fits and you just run the tail through it it's just that simple i mean just run the tail to into it t attach its own or you can just do the same setup if you do um if you attach it onto the port wrap that's how you would do that but it vice versa if you're doing the um the pulley now with the pulley you wouldn't want to do that um all you would simply do is just go around the tree and then wrap the loose wraps the same way um and that will work in that situation so again there's many ways to do it. Everybody has their own thing. Again, it'll come down to preference, so I'm not going to be dogmatic about it. But I'm going to show you um, something that's neat about um, this porter wrap device. Now, again, like I said, I like to use knots. I mean, use um, carabiners. So I'm going to take this carabiner off here. Sorry for the video. It's all shaky. I, I said I didn't use my head cam. This, I don't know why I twisted that on there thinking I'm in the tree <laughs> but the porter um, with the um, spider leg now this is an old rope that I have there so all you do I like like I said I clip into to that part and you know of course you would twist this on if you was in a real life situation um, and of course you got it tied off in the porter wrap and see the good thing about this device I barely got lifted up off the tree because of how I got everything set up. It's all over the place. But you can see how that how that piece, you see how it stabilizes? Let me go to the middle more here with my foot. But you can see, there it go, right there. That piece is stabilized. So you have to learn, you know, weight distribution when you're doing um, a setup like that. And that's how that thing will hang. That's especially good when you're working over glass buildings. Um, or, or greenhouses and, and buildings in, in general um, those spider leg devices come in handy and then again too with this piece right here this is considered a false crotch um, that you can make so you'll be in a really good situation um, to be able to um, 
Oh, sorry about that. I almost dropped the phone. You'll be in a really good situation to put this out on the limb, you know, depending on what kind of wood it is, if it's oak. If you have like, say if this was the opposite direction, it was horizontal, this could be on the bottom and you can use it to rig this pieces off of it since you don't have a real place to tie into. So there's, again, there's many ways to do this and this is just somewhat of an overview. I know it's all, I got, got it all jumbled up and all over the place, but this is just a, maybe a, a brief introduction to using pulleys and using the porter wrap. And there's many, again, many other videos and you see guys use this. That's why I'm not gonna really get in depth with it, but just um, for the sake of having a video on my channel, I know a lot of guys ask me um, using these pulleys, how do I like them in, in, in different situations like that. I like the porter wrap. I mean, it's 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 say it saves your rope. I mean, you can just see the difference in between going around a tree. I mean, I've had this rope right here. Uh, I can't get it. Give or take maybe a year. Now, don't get me wrong. I do a lot of natural crotch rigging with this three strand. Um, I would say almost two and a half years, two years now. But you can see the quality of the rope is still really good. And I'll try to untwist it a little bit. I got to use both of my hands. But you can see. Inside my rope there, look at that. See how nice and new looking that thing still looks. And it's and, and I and again I know my cycles of use and I keep that stuff in mind, you know. And definitely you gotta remember what you take in the pieces, the size and everything. So the better you treat your stuff, the longer it lasts. If you take it off tops that's that's 25, 30, 40 foot long, even though they're not that heavy, but the drop and all that, spring load and everything back and forth, you can best believe you'll have less cycles of failure. So um or tooth failure and so there again that's just a brief introduction to this guys um again you can use the, the pulleys with single die slings any form of loopy loopy sling and also if you like me um if you like the kind of cut corner well not cut corner but kind of tea a little bit that's why i'll be taking large limbs you might have seen this device used in the video um of spurless um removal of large limbs um that's how i use that device and you kind of see how i did it with this cedar log here um, this post and um, and this is an old device that I use and, and definitely sometimes in situations where I don't necessarily need a new rope I can just take and use this old device and it's the same way it's not it's not spliced as well this is when I first was learning this this is tachyon and this is um this is um both double braid but tachyon double braid and then lava double braid on the left tachyon this is so much harder to, to, to braid um but even then I mean it's really tough rope though I mean I use it you can see the Shirelle tree the tag that's another reason why it's so hard too, to um, to to splice, but and you can see the inner core there. But again, nonetheless, still effective. But don't use if you're in a situation where you need to save, make sure you ain't gonna hurt nothing. Don't use rope like this. But this is just only in situations where nothing is. I'm not gonna be liable for anything, or or it's just a situation where I don't want to damage or use my better stuff. So I just use the old stuff until it just goes down. That way, everything's getting again cycles of use. Keep keep the use going. Um, same way with the slings and everything that's a single dot sling again you wrap around the tree you form a bike you connect your pulley inside there and these things just come right off most of them some of them are fixed sheaves and i mean there's guys you do so much and you'll find as time goes on you it'll come down to preference you know and you can do this in the tree that way you don't have to you can just take the rope down or insert it you can defeat it through or or do it like that and then you'll be right back through so that's kind of like what that looks like if you have never seen one um i know some guys are still new to this so there you have it there's that and, and then vice versa if you want to take it off and this is just, you know, just a basic cmi block it's basically what it'll look like it's pretty decent size they come bigger and the dmm pulley is the best it's got you can put two ropes in it i need to buy me one always every time i think to go get one i just end up doing something else done with my money so i don't buy it but see you can see that that bite there see how i form that bite and how i just take that off right there see that that's how that works how that would work you can do it either with the rope or with i mean with the pulley attached i do it with the pulley attached but some guys do it different and that's how that works so you can just easily uninstall that thing you know install it real quick and you'll be done there's that and i'm gonna take this rope out of here and show you again i'm gonna stand this up because it'll be just a little easier to show you this bite okay there we go and the same way with this bite on the back of this thing you will form this 
like that you come through the top of there that's the bite that you'll form sorry about the angles again boom that's how you would do it and based on where you're rigging will, will determine where your tail end or which side of this bite that you want your um if you're rigging from over here you want this tail end to come out on the other side so you'll be over here like it is here you know or vice versa if you're rigging the other way and then also one other um thing to take into consideration if your guys you know you're rigging and most of the time you will kind of offset the puller you wouldn't not unless you have plenty of room you normally wouldn't need to rig directly over the, the um quarter wrap but you kind of offset it just like at a slight angle that way you have your room to work to the side, to the left, or to the right of the tree, or wherever you got. Or if there's a bend in the tree or whatever. But basically, depending on where you'll be pulling this device, that will determine which side that you would want um, this piece right here to, to pull from. See, if you pull it from that way like there, it isn't going anywhere. But here's let me show you what happens if you are rigging from this side. See how that thing tends to pull out? So you have to really know what you're doing when you set this up again. That's why I say I ain't going to go real in depth with it, but that's another little tip right there. You wouldn't want to pull, be rigging from this way when you have tied your your um, your um bite around the, the rope this way or this um sling when you insert this device because all it's going to do is turn. So you want to work against that bite because it won't, once it locks that up, it won't turn. But again, that's just to show you, I mean, a loose demonstration and I'll show you the same exact way how you take this thing off it's just loose wraps that's all it is loose wraps one more loose wrap some people call it cow hitch some people do timber hitches some people do other kind of hitches you know some people just use the running bowline faithfully on these things i mean it's just whatever kind of knot that you decide to use hey go for it you know so again that's that single dot sling again you just see how you just go in you feed it into that loop and it holds it and you go from there how that piece works so that's how you would just take out about going about doing that and again that's just a little overview guys and you take care thanks for watching you don't want me true boy for life peace out